Welcome to this Getting Started with SharePoint Framework Extensions tutorial series and this is tutorial 3 Deploy Your Extension and the Site Collection aka Hello World Part 3 and this is the General Availability September 2017 edition and in this uh, tutorial we'll be uh, continuing building our uh, application uh, application customizer extension so you will have to complete the tutorials one and two to get here and and actually get the, your extension to be available to be deployed uh, within the SharePoint site so what we want to do is get your extension available within the SharePoint without the debugging uh, debug query parameters so let's actually jump in uh, uh, back to our code or back to our console. If you don't have, if you still have the, the uh, everything running, you can do a control C and, and well stop your console from running because we need to do some modifications uh, or review our structure and then package our solution for deployment. So uh, let's jump on, on, on the Visual Studio code side. So in the Visual Studio uh, code, uh, so let me actually open up the solution. Let's do a code and, and a dot, and that's going to open up the solution or the Visual Studio code within this uh, folder. So here we go. There's our application customizer, which we created in the, the tutorial series, uh, tutorials one and two. So what's in, uh, the, as part of the GA uh, release of the extension, we actually wanted to make this thing slightly easier for you. So the basic deployment of these structures uh, to the SharePoint. So as part of the default scaffolding, if you do not have an existing element XML file, we will get you the basic structure of getting the extension deployed within the site. And, and this one uh, will be uh, updated based on your uh, instance, so the title will be updated accord accordingly. The location of the extension application customizer that's going to be well, that's not updated because that's actually what it has to be. But the client side component is updated accordingly, uh, accordingly based on your instance and based on your manifest. So this one here is referring again to the manifest ID which is actually uh, in here. So this ID is getting actually uh, defined in the client side component ID section. And then we have the client side, uh, co client side component properties. And this one was the parametrization of that particular instance. So technically you can actually have a multiple different behaviors of that uh, extension based on these parameters. And this one, uh, as part of the default scaffolding, it is giving you uh, the basic setup of test message uh, being something else. In our case, right now, we've already modified uh, the property section uh, and properties of our application customizer. So we need to modify the section uh, to get it aligned uh, with, the, with our changes. So let me actually copy that updated value from the written uh, tutorial format uh, and in our case uh, in the in the steps tutorial steps one and two or actually to be precise in the step number two we actually updated those properties to be bottom and top and so we actually need to update the property configuration in here as well. Now, the reason why we need this element XML file is that whenever the solution is getting installed on a SharePoint, we'll need to associate our application customizer to be present in a site. Um, and the reason for doing uh, for this requirement is that it's not like every single site collection, every single site uh, will have the same extensions and same application customizers um, available. That's why you need to explicitly enable from potentially tens and tens of uh, extensions within your tenant and the specific ones which you want to have enabled within that particular site collection. So in our case, when we created the solution, there was one specific question which is super important and it drives, comes back on the deployment techniques of the extensions. So in when we, when we created uh, the basic scaffolding, there was a question related on, will this uh, solution be by default available within app catalog or within the app uh, within the sites when it's added to the app catalog and we answered actually no on that question and the, and the, the, since we answered no on that question we did not get uh, the the needed attribute in the app package uh, solution so you could actually have an additional configuration in here in the packet solution which would be the skip uh, feature deployment uh, oops and let me actually do that one, which is that the skip uh, skip feature deployment. And this setting could be true or false. So if it's true, uh, it means that the solution which is getting deployed to the app catalog 
will be automatically available across your tenant. And that means that if you're deploying a web, app, a web port, and the web port will be available across all of your site collections immediately when the application is getting, application is getting to the app catalog. In the case of extensions, it means that your extensions are immediately available within the sites, but you still need to associate those extensions to be uh, in the site level. So you still need to enable that extension to a certain user custom action or certain object within a site to actually make it render. So because we answered uh, no or false uh, on this question, that attribute doesn't exist in our solution. So I can actually get rid of that. And that means that the solution and the extension will be available within the site only when the solution is being explicitly installed on the site. And whenever the solution is getting installed on a site, the elements XML files, which are using the classic SharePoint framework, uh, SharePoint, SharePoint feature framework definitions, are getting applied on the site as well. So whenever the, you install the solution to the site, SharePoint will also read this custom action definition, and it will associate this in this particular case to the web .user action, uh, user, user custom action collection. So there will be a new custom action available within the site, which is referencing a client-side component ID, which is actually referencing the solution within the app catalog. And for that particular install instance, these are the properties which are available. So let's see this one in, in practice. And this is slightly con uh, might be confusing and it's hard to actually get if you're not super familiar of the logistics, how things are getting deployed on SharePoint. But let me walk through uh, the basic process, how we get this extension available within a site. And hopefully that will clarify uh, that uh, this deployment mechanism slightly more detailed. We've now updated the XML uh, accordingly, so we don't have to do anything else. In the package uh, solution JSON, we have by default already as part of the scaffolding, we have a reference to the element XML file. So this one will make sure that there will be an application uh, web scope feature, which will then activate this one whenever the solution is getting deployed on the site. And now let me jump uh, on the console side. So we want to do a call bundle just in case to make sure that everything is uh, compiling properly. Technically, we do have the bundle already done uh, because we didn't do any modification. But this is making sure that we have the latest uh, latest version of the of the JavaScript uh, transcompiled from the TypeScript. Then we want to do callup uh, call uh, package solution. Let me actually uh, clear that one callup packets uh, solution and this one will create the SPP KT file for your solution. So this one will generate all the needed packaging for your application uh, extension for your SharePoint framework client side extension so you're able to deploy that to the SharePoint online. And what actually happened here is that we create that specific SPP KT file. So now if I open up an explorer in this folder and let me move my explorer on this screen. We can actually see that under the SharePoint folder and solution folder, there is an app extension SPP KT file, uh, which actually has the needed definition for the extension. Now, it does not have the JavaScript. So the JavaScript still needs to be hosted somewhere. It needs to be hosted on a URL where, which, is pointed, which is pointed inside of this SPP KT file. And then whenever there's somebody's getting the extension into use or a web part into use, we'll use that URL to load the manifest and JavaScript implementation from the CDN or from SharePoint or whatever the location is. Now, to be able to understand what's actually inside of that SPP KT file, you can go back on your uh, Visual Studio code and you can extend uh, the, the SharePoint folder in here and you can extend the debug folder and this actually contains all of the elements and xmls and everything else which were automatically generated based on your configuration when we executed the package solution command so now if i close this uh, we can actually see that this is precisely what is actually getting packaged on SPP KG file and which gives you then insights what is inside of the file. So as an example, if I extend this folder, which is a subfolder for the feature, we can find that the element XML file and we can see that content is packaged inside of the SPP KG file. We can also find the extension definition here. And let me actually uh, format uh, the 
this one so we can actually see the definition of the, our client side component we have a client side component which is a component type of extension extension type is application customizer and the url where we are loading our javascript files is the local host 4321 because right now we didn't yet deploy our javascript files to a cdn or any centralized location because we wanted to test the, the, the behavior that things work properly without the debugging query parameters before we actually get stuff deployed to the CDN. So let's do that. So let's actually open up our SPPKT file. Uh, you can see the SPPKT file uh, generated here. It's waiting for to get deployed. Let me open up my application catalog. So let me go to my application catalog in here. Uh, actually, let me open up that app catalog from there. We can say that right now in my app catalog, I do not have any solutions available. I can go to my solution folder and I can easily track and drop my SPPKT file to my tenant. And this one will then prompt um, the trust dialog. So the person who has the right permissions to upload applications to the app catalog, which been chosen by the tenant administrator, can actually trust this application to be deployed. So now you can see that the URL is pointing still to the local host. Uh, I can click deploy. And now the solution is available to be used within the site. So before we install the solution, let's jump quickly on the console. So I'm going to go back on my console. I'm going to clear everything. And I want to make sure that my, my local host is running. So I'm going to do call up serve and uh, no browser. And that's going to now serve my JavaScript files, which are referenced from the SPPKT file from the local host. So we're kind of a mimicking situation where the, the actual implementation files are already in the CDN. Good. Everything is up and running. Let's go to a site within a SharePoint and let's get uh, things installed at the site. So this is the team site, which we tested, which we used for testing. We do not have any customization or we do not have uh, any extensions being rendered if I move across uh, the lists and the document library is cleared as well. So you can see that there's no extensions getting loaded and nothing. So now I want to go and install that extension to the site. So I'm going to go to the site contents add an app because we're getting stuff from the app catalog and in here we, we can now see our app extension client side solution to be available so i'm clicking that one that is now getting installed to the site and as part of the installation of that one to the site the feature xml the element xml the feature xml files and the element xml is getting executed or activated and those are now basically telling for sharepoint that hey there is an application customizer which is meant to be executed whenever the user is actually uh, moving across this site. Now, you can see that right now the installation is still in gray. Um, the, the, the behavior is slightly, let's say, um, it might take a while to get the application installed. It's relatively fast quite often. The easiest way to see is it actually reflecting your uh, deployment is to do F5. That's the easiest way to see when it's actually getting installed and now it's getting installed and as you could see our actual feature our application customizer was activated as well so our top area of the page and bottom area of the page is getting rendered without any query parameters like we would be using this in production usage and now if i move uh, for example in the in the site contents oh, we were actually in the site contents if i move to a document library we can actually see the exact same behavior in a document library where our application customizer is getting rendered as well. If I create a modern page, so I'm adding a page on the site, our application customizer is getting rendered on this page as well. So whenever the page is coming up from here we go, there's my application customizer getting rendered on the modern page experience as well. So let's actually save this one so we can see and everything is working properly. Now, what's imp important to realize uh, related on this modern and classic experience uh, behavior. So this one is a classic team site. So by default, the classic team site has a classic experience, the welcome page. The, the application customizers and SharePoint framework extensions do not work on a classic experience. So the easiest way for me for fix this is actually go to the site contents and create a page, a modern page, Go to the site pages uh, section 
I do have a few pages here already. And let's see, uh, we actually created Hey There a few seconds ago. So we can actually set this one as the welcome page of the site. So I'm going to click that one and then I'm going to, oh, do I need to actually, I need to check it in. So let's actually check that one in. So let me actually click that one, do a proper publishing of the page. There we go. Now it's actually getting published. It's out on the site. Let me do a refresh uh, in here. And now I can actually select this page to be my home page. So make a home page is the selection. Uh, and obviously you can do this programmatically as well. So that means that even though we are in a classic team site, the experience is const consistently modern. Uh, so if I go to the home of the site or if I request just the URL of the site, uh, my modern experience is actually getting rendered together with the application customizer, which we just successfully deployed, uh, which is right now still rendered and hosted from the local host. But in the next steps, we'll actually get it uh, served uh, from the CDN. But that's all what we're going to do in this, this video. So thanks for watching. In the next step, we're going to actually take the JavaScript and uh, output of uh, the JavaScript files, uh, which are actually the implementation of our application customizer, and configure those to be running in Office 365 CDN, which is part of your Office 365 uh, subscription. So all free uh, for you to use uh, to host your SharePoint framework customizations uh, within your tenant. But thanks for watching this one. Hopefully we'll follow up on the next one as well.